want to. He's a graduate of Cal Poly Panoma, and Alfred's been working for the Bureau of Engineering for 20 years. Alfred spent 13 years working on wastewater treatment project plants where he was fortunate to work on different capacities on many projects. M most notably, Albert was a project manager for the city's nitrogen removal conversion program for both the Donald C. Tillman Water Reclamation Plant and the Los Angeles Glendale Water Reclamation Plant. In that role, he was responsible for delivering 10 projects into construction with a total construction budget of approximately $101 million prior to regulatory deadline. Alfred has also worked on the city's Proposition O bond program where he served as assistant program manager, helping to oversee the $500 million program to construct projects to improve the water quality of the city's rakes, uh, lakes, rivers, and beaches. During that time, Alfred also served as the project manager on the Echo Lake uh, rehabilitation project, which was completed construction earlier this year. Since January of 2012, Albert has been working on the 6th Street Viaduct Replacement Project. He is the program manager for this $401 million project to replace the iconic 6th Street Viaduct, overseeing the property acquisition, design, and construction of the project. So Alfred will talk for a little bit, and then Jesse will finish up. So thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you, Chuck. Good afternoon. Uh, I'm just going to provide some background about the project, and Jesse will talk about the visualization efforts that they went through. The Sixth Street Viaduct was built in 1932. Uh, those of you that, that might be film buffs might recognize this uh, viaduct. It's starred in a lot of movies. I think it's in just about every other car commercial I see these days on TV. Um, this is the main span over the Alley River, which I think might be the most recognizable. Um, the viaduct is 3,500 feet long. Here's an aerial view which shows that it runs from Boyle Heights on the, this is looking, no, the north is to the top, so from the east side it's Boyle Heights and then the west side is heading into downtown in the Arts District. You can see it crosses over uh, a freeway, a lot of industrial property, two railroad corridors that, that, are, that straddle each side of the Alley River, and um, of course the river itself and then more industrial properties before touching down. It's a very uh, complicated project, got a lot of issues that we have to deal with. Um, one of the, the reason why we're replacing the viaduct is it suffers from alkali silica reaction, which basically means the concrete mix um, was a poor uh, quality concrete mix where the, there's an ongoing reaction since the time the concrete was originally poured that's irreversible and is causing the concrete to spall and crumble. So it's weakening the viaduct and it's gotten to the point where it needs to be replaced. So we went through a lot of study to get this project approved. It's a $401 million project, as mentioned earlier. One of the significant things to point out is that we're realigning the viaduct as well. If you can see in that area in the middle of this slide, you see the red uh, line is the new alignment. Over the river, there's a sharp kink in the bridge, which is a sharp turn. So when we build this to current standards, we need to, to smooth out that curve. So therefore, it's on a different alignment, which requires a lot of right-of-way acquisition. When we got this project approved, we wanted to build a modern cable-supported bridge. So we initiated a design competition. And these are just some of the ideas of, you know, this is an iconic bridge for the city of Los Angeles. We wanted to have a signature bridge to replace it. So we're looking at cable-supported bridges. We had shared with some of the, uh, the design consultants some of the ideas that we thought were good uh, in terms of architectural expression for the replacement viaduct. Uh, we, we issued an RFP. Um, we received nine proposals. Um, well, before I get there, one of the things I should point out is this is another view of the, the viaduct uh, crossing over the river, and there's several challenges there you, that, that this highlights. You can see there's high voltage transmission lines that straddle, that run the length of the river on both sides of the, of the river and cross the viaduct. So in terms of building a signature bridge there, or if you saw, we, we're limited by height. We can't get close to those high voltage transmission lines. Uh, crossing the railroads is also another big challenge because those railroads need to stay in operation um, while we construct the, demolish the old viaduct and construct the new viaduct. Uh, back to the RFP, we received nine proposals. We uh, shortlisted to six by reviewing the proposals. We interviewed six teams and selected three teams to compete in a design competition. Uh, the, the winning team was HNTB, 
And Jesse will come up here in a minute to talk about the process that they went through to develop their winning proposal. Um, I'm going to show you a couple of slides of the other proposals that were, were um, submitted. This is just another perspective from the river bottom up to the main span crossing over the river. And you can see those high voltage transmission lines crossing over the viaduct, creating a challenge. This was one of the other designs that was um, submitted as part of the design competition. This design, was led, this design team was led by AECOM. It featured uh, three piers with uh, cable stayed uh, supports that support the main span over the, via over the alley river. And this was the uh, rendering of the proposal submitted by the Parsons Prinkerhoff team. I think Jesse mentioned that this was shown at an earlier presentation. Uh, also shows cable stayed uh, supports over the main span over the alley river. So with that, I'm going to turn it over to Jesse, and he'll start talking about the, their design, how they developed their design, and what it, the, it ultimately looked like that won the competition. OK, th thank you, Alfred. Um, and again, I do want to mention it to Kevin uh, that he showed uh, PB's proposal earlier and, uh, and talking about the big data and how it was important to uh, have it have to model uh, the city of LA, and I'll show that later on. I'll kind of talk about the process of how we came up with the design. Um, again, uh, the city had said that they wanted the cable supported uh, bridge structure, and so we uh, would come up with some different alternatives of what we would end up uh, modeling. So on the top two, you see our two cable state styles, um, and then we've got an arch, and then we've got several variations of, um, of the bridges. Like the first one here is called uh, Extrados Cable Stay. It was a modern version, and we are kind of following what the uh, that city of LA was saying that you know they wanted an iconic uh, cable stay structure. But then we also looked at a historic style bridge, which which is what they also showed too, because they were saying that they wanted to match some of the other bridges in a historic manner. Um, and then here we even show what the night rendering of that um, a historic cable stay bridge would look like. Then we also explored other design ideas. Um, we were you know, fascinated still with the arch, since all the bridges were all arches uh, over the LA River, including the existing bridge. And then we came up with other types. Uh, this one here is the hoop uh, tower cable stay. And then we had one that's a diagonal arch that um, uh, was an arch that went over the LA River. And then we had one that was more um, a cable stay in Extrados that was in the median um, and not on the outside. And we also came up with this uh, rigid frame um, that didn't have any cables. So in, in that, um, so part of what uh, we talked about is that we had to model the city of LA. And this one here was used uh, to show all the different alternatives that we had. Again, just like um, in the previous, we had to model it extensively. We had to model the LA River, the train tracks, uh, and the existing bridge itself, as well as the surrounding site. The transmission lines, again, that's pretty important because that's something that has to remain. And that's something that people seem to neglect uh, those top, um, transmission lines. So here we show um, all our alternatives in its place of what it would look like. Uh, this one is not on YouTube. The one on YouTube uh, is the one I'll, I'll show later on. <laughs> and then we fade it back to that, so. And then we also wanted to show construction sequencing of how we would you know, typically model something. So for a cable stay, uh, here we show how we would do the, the structure where we would build the piers. And one of the issues with this is we were trying to show we could build over the active rail lines without interrupting their service. But now when we got to um, having to select only one design, we had to um, you know, come up with a solution of what we would finally show. And so what we did was we took a look at the old bridge again. And here, this is the elevation of the existing um, bridge compared to all the others. And so here's a sketch, and you know how architects love to you know, sketch and draw. So here is the simple drawing of what the existing bridge would look like. And then this is the cable stay idea that uh, was being proposed. And we decided to come up with a hybrid design. It's like, is there a way that we can combine the two together? 
to come up with a contemporary forward-looking form that recalls the existing bridge. I think the arch was kind of a, a, a neat feature on the design, and we wanted to keep that. And so this is part of uh, our you know, sketch solution of what we would do with the existing bridge. A combination of that would be a, um, a bridge like that. And so uh, the city had then announced who the winners were, and uh, again, it was a team of h and along with uh, Mike Maltzen, Architects, Hargrove Associates, and A.C. Martin. And so this is what the final renderings of the bridge ended up looking like. What we decided to do is that rather than having the pier in the middle of the river, uh, why not span the river um, over the rivers? Um, and, uh, and one of the things about this arch concept was the fact that uh, it allowed access uh, up to the bridge down to below by being able to walk on parts of the arches themselves. And we even showed it so you could even get on top of the arches. So it was this design idea that the flowing of these arches um, that allowed you know, people to go in and out, and it created a whole iconic look to it. And then here we you know, extended that over the highway at Boyle's Height looking towards the city. And again, and here is the aerial shot. And then this is the animation that you've seen on, on YouTube. And again, that's the important thing about this, that since it is in the city of Los Angeles, uh, we had to build the entire city in order to show it in its background. And one of the important things about this design is that the bigger arches are over the train tracks and then the smaller arch is over the river. And usually it, everybody kept thinking about, it, you know, we need the big arch over um, the river itself. But since the bigger spans was over the train tracks, this is how we ended up following that, that scheme. Uh, this was a 3D, 3ds Max, um, um, you know, by Autodesk, um, and I'm trying. You know, I, I think most of that, and some of the models uh, we may have acquired from some other locations. I don't know if it was Google Warehouse or so on some of the downtown offices, but then everything else within the site, including the adjacent bridges, we had to go ahead and model it, and that was uh, again our decision. Uh, someone asked about. In fact, Alfred even asked about how. You know, when did we start modeling this? And we did this maybe six months uh, ahead of when the RFP came out. Because if you wait for the RFP, you know, you'll never get it, get it done completely. So here we show a transformation of what it would look like um, down below so that um, uh, here we show the, the, the pedestrian access. And one of the things that we wanted to say is that it's not just the bridge itself, that we also wanted to uh, create a whole um, parkland down below and one of the key things, again, is that we wanted to show some of the people being able to walk up who are athletically inclined. Yes. Yes, we do. And, and I think that's it. <laughs> so, so any questions for Alfred and myself? Or? Yes, Danny. Uh, so, well, since this is a DDC session, mm -hmm. uh, were you able to follow through and as it got, and once the design was done, uh, deliver that digital data directly to the contractor for construction? Uh, Alfred, do you want to answer that? <laughs>
Yeah. Right, and again, that's um, and this was what was done for the competition, and then again, the design has evolved, um, and and so, uh, but that's part of that is that we have all the models there that we have been you know, reusing, repurposing it, so it's not like a one-time deal, you know, in order to uh, uh, to do that. Are you saying this is going to be a CNGC with a guaranteed maximum? Yes. On both your projects, did you use uh, any sequencing software like Synchro or uh, now this one was all primarily done in Max. Uh, we haven't done the Navis work yet on, on, on these projects. Um, on the Huey P. Long, it was um, again it was more of a visualization tool. Um, it, we didn't take it into a true um, model with every single detail. That was something that was uh, beyond the scope of what we were doing at that time. Uh, but they did use that model in order to confirm how they would sequence the, you know, the barge movement as well as the movement of all the, all, all the jacks that needed. And, and so that's what it was primarily used for. And when you said you started uh, modeling six months before the RFP, um, but yet the design wasn't selected. Well, so um, no, it, well, you have to realize you have to model the city. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and so, and that's part of it. We know about the project, you know, way ahead of time, and we take the risk of modeling the cities, because if we wait until the RFP, that is such a short amount of time. And then when we, you know, then we can concentrate more on the design of the bridges themselves. But especially in these cities like that, and what Kevin has presented, like uh, when you have uh, a site like New York or San Francisco, LA or Seattle, you know, and you have to show it in its context. You can't just show only a certain portion of it. And this is what was really important. You have to make the judgment call to say, well, here's a major project in LA, you know, and it's going to be shown. We have to, you know, model the entire city. Yes, Dave. Was the proposal led by the engineers that are actually doing the design? We all know that sometimes you got the marketing group and they do all this fancy stuff, and then you win it, and then you throw it over to you know, the engineering group. And, oh, oh. And or as far as if you know, the people who came up with the concept, the ones that are going to grind it out. Yep. No, it wasn't the marketing. You know, we they. This is what we wanted to do in order to, to, to do that. Usually marketing will say, oh, you've got to show some, some stuff. But this one, again, was pretty much driven by the engineers. All right, well, thank you very much. Thank you.